God damn it. Looks like we're rolling. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, I'm uh, extremely tired right now, but you know what? It's no big deal. We're all tired. It's been a weird, it's been a weird week late, uh, of work and stuff. So, um, but I am actually super relieved because this is this is uh, the break I need. I get to talk to an awesome artist, and um, I uh, first became familiar with this guy's work. Man, maybe a few months ago, um, I see a lot of caricature art out there and illustration, um, and you know it's it's something that I've been doing for a long time. So uh, it takes a little bit of something to catch my eye, and um, I really enjoyed um, his his style. He's got a really nice style. He's got a really good um, uh, command of form and exaggeration and uh, rendering, and um, and so I, I started following him and I started checking out his stuff and then a few months passed and we ended up doing a lightbox thing and there he is he's on lightbox sketching together and it was a lot of fun to be able to sketch with him um so i thought hey man it'd be cool to talk with this guy he's all the way from ghana and africa um uh, this country with yeah. an amazing history um and uh, i'm curious to hear about uh a lot of a lot of uh, what it's like to be an artist and do caricature in in ghana so um, without further ado, please welcome this kick-ass art- artist all the way from Africa. This is awesome. Everyone, please welcome <laughs> Bright Aquar. How's it yeah, going, man? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thanks for joining all, me. All the, thank you for having me. All the stories that I've been, I've been um, dreaming about sharing ever since you asked me to be on your on your podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm I'm going to try and tell as many of them as possible. But yeah, um, my name is Bright, and I live and work here in Accra, in Ghana. And I've been making um, caricature work for about six years mm. or more. And um, let me just start off with this one. So back in 2003, when I was in senior high school, um, senior high school over here is like the, the stage you go to before you go to college or university. Oh, okay. I'm in senior high school and I'm reading a Vibe magazine. And then there is a page where they review an album by Nas, the rapper Nas. Mm. And then there is this painting or there's this picture of Nas on the page. And I was so I was so blown by it. And what I did was I ripped the page out of the magazine. And I, I have kept that page since then and I still have it now. Oh, that's I ripped awesome. the page out of the magazine and the work was by an artist called Mike Thompson, who okay. I know you know very well because mm-hmm. he's also been on your own podcast. Yeah, yeah. So um, fast forward, maybe two years later, I go to the internet cafe because I didn't grow up around computers and the internet and, and such. And so I go to the internet cafe where you know, I can access all these things and I'm looking him up. And then I, find, I found his website. I got to see more of his work. What I didn't know at the time was that he was painting digitally. I, mm. I only thought of painting as something being done um, traditionally, mm. especially with the way his style was at the time. Yeah, yeah. So he was somebody I looked up to. I went to college. I still thought about him all the time. I, I, then I got on Facebook, and then and this guy is on Facebook as well. So I start mm-hmm. to write him and tell him how much his work has inspired me. And so, he, and he actually responds. He responds, he looks at some of my work and he posts it up on his page. So me and him, we get a little, like, I assume he's my friend now. The person I've looked up to is my friend. And, and sorry, and you said this then, 
was this back this was back in 2003 when you first saw the work yes this was okay in, it was in 2003 2004 when i saw that painting of oh, nas which that's I a long time today. ago man yeah, i thought i could time. find it before okay, sorry yeah <laughs> so yeah so um one time i'm checking out my thompson's page and he posts about another artist and this artist's name is Jason Seiler. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but then this was in this was in 2012, I think. Mm. And and that was the very moment I decided that I was going to purchase a graphics tablet and give digital painting <laughs> a shot. That's yeah, awesome. So <laughs> it's been a very long time coming. So to be speaking with you right now is oh, is that's like awesome, a, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and then I've been trying my hands at it ever since, you know. That's checking awesome. Checking out man. videos on YouTube and yeah, just giving myself little exercises. Yeah, I'm speaking with you today. Yeah, man. Well, you know what? Hey, I like your work a lot because you know, like like I said, the one thing I like about it is because, um, you know, to me, caricature is a true art form that doesn't in a lot of ways, doesn't really get much respect. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, that's why I'm curious what it's like where you're from, because in the United States, I've, I've felt that, that there's not as much respect for it. But when I've gone to Europe, um, people in Europe just love caricature. You know, like it's, it's like a, it's a real art form. Like they actually have gallery shows. Um, I mean, okay. I've, I've been a part of shows in Iran and it was against the law there. <laughs> so they had like underground okay. caricature shows that I, my work was in. And so it just seemed to be more of an appreciation outside of the United States for that kind of art form. But um, the one thing I appreciate about your work is that, you know, you, I can tell that you're an artist when I look at it. Like I can see, I can see your, your, uh, your um, focus on the brushwork and the planes of the face, the form, there's a lot of weight. I can feel the weight. And so your work right away, I, oh. I related to it. I'm like, Oh yeah, this guy knows what, what's up. He's, he's, you know? Um, and uh, I think it's funny too. That's one thing that I enjoy is that, is that, you know, there's a, there's so many caricature artists out there, <laughs> like too many. Um, but the humor, that's that's what it's you know there's supposed okay. to be like this this humor to it and you you've got a really nice sense of humor that's just it's in you don't even have to know what the story's about it's just like in the face you really capture it so that's what okay. drew me to it um it was funny when you when you oh wow. when you talked about um mike thompson and like the nos thing at first i thought you were this is this is what's interesting is at first i thought you were talking about a painting that i did of nos around 2003 or so um because it was it's just oh. weird that i was like wait a minute that was published because i I'm, i wasn't aware that that painting of mine was published so, so at first i was like wait a minute where was that published um because one of my <laughs> one of my very first acrylic paintings that i really um that i pulled off in a way that i was very proud of was a, a painting of nas okay. um wow and um yeah, and it was like, um, you know, maybe about like this big. It's a small little acrylic painting, uh, but it was never published. So anyways, when you started that story, I was like, wait a minute. What was that? Like, <laughs> and then when you said Mike Thompson, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. That makes way more sense. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I, I, didn't know, I didn't know it was even digitally made at the time because you yeah. know, there was a, a lot of loose brushwork. Uh, and I naturally loved that because... Um, even between then and when I started painting digitally myself, I took a lot of time to learn how to paint traditionally. Mm, that's good. You know, so yeah. there is a way that I learn. There's a way that I learn where, when I see the work of an artist I admire, I just stare at it for yeah. a long time and sort of reverse engineer the person's process. You know, it's as if I'm there looking at them make it and. Probably because I've I've done so many trial and errors, mm -hmm. I can imagine which trial or which error must have given him or her that that uh, effect, and that is one of the ways that I learned. So I kept that page and I constantly stare at it. Sometimes before I paint, I can just stare at it for a while, and then you know, <laughs> that sort awesome. of gives me a certain boost of confidence. Yeah, that's that's work. same same thing with me, man. Like when I, so like, it's interesting too. Like when you say two thousand three, it's like um, 
that was the year my daughter was born, my, my oldest daughter. And that's the year that I started teaching myself how to paint was that year. Um, and I also started getting into digital painting around that time. Cause up to that point, I, I was, you know, only traditional. And then, um, you know, a few of my friends finally talked me into getting a tablet and everything, but the same, I would do the same thing. I would go to, you know, like a, a bookstore, flip through all the magazines and I would see like CF Payne or some of these illustrators out there doing what I wanted to do. And I would, you know, buy a mag, my head, my wall was just covered with, you know, ripped out magazine pages. <laughs> pages. Yeah. And I'm, I'm self-taught as well. So um, I, that's how mm-hmm. I learned was like looking at these magazine pages Um and you know, it's really funny. Did you, did you um, ever experience this? Um, I'm curious because like when I would teach myself how to paint by looking at some, someone's work from a magazine, uh, you know, I never at that time thought about the fact that their work was probably done much larger and then it was shrunken down to the magazine, you know, and there's a lot of things that are lost, you know, um, something that's more loose ends up looking tighter in a magazine. Um, and so I taught myself how to paint that tight based off of what I was seeing in print. And then years later, I ended up making friends with some of these guys or a lot of them. And then I got to see originals in person and I realized, whoa, this was way different than what I thought. And my work was like, way more intricate in a way because i was like focusing in too much on the on these details yeah um and then i realized that they they were working way looser and larger because they know it's going to be shrunken into print size which which was another yeah. reason yeah. why they could work faster and here i am with like a, a paintbrush with like one hair on it just like <laughs> getting all these details <laughs> so um, i'm just curious like did you have any, any experiences like that? Like once after you paint for a while, you realize, wait a minute, this, you know, I'm doing it. Um, um, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm still going through a lot of those um, realizations right now because <laughs> um, for the larger period, I think most of my work have been enjoyed on handheld devices mm. and your phone is so, the screen is, it only allows you to see so much yeah. that it would look very tight and so uh, detailed. But I also work, right now I also work in very, very large formats. So sometimes I've run very huge prints and that is where people can get to appreciate all the looseness and all the free lines so that someone could come close to a print and, you know, would, would almost not believe that this was maybe made digitally because it looks in a large format it looks very loose and it looks, it really looks like it was made by hand. Yeah. That's you know? great. So some of those things are lost, but I think, I think in, in all those things, you get to learn something. Mm-hmm. You, you get to learn something by, you know, making all those minute details and maybe you, you discard it later, but it's all yeah. a learning process for me. Do you know who Ishmael Rolden is? Do you know his work? No, unfortunately not. Um, a lot of my examples would <laughs> would probably differ from yours because. Oh yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I'll I'll send you some some stuff um, after this, um, right. but he was um, he's not with us anymore. He passed away, I think, in two thousand nine. Um, but he became a really good friend of mine. But he was a an illustrator that was huge. In like he was he's he lived in New York and um, he. Uh, he was in, he was published in every single thing you could think of. And, uh, he was one of those guys that I started sending my work to before there was Facebook or anything. Um, I started, I found his email and I just was bombarding him with like, check out this drawing. And then he was a, such a nice guy. And, um, he, uh, you know, he started like kind of critiquing me and telling me I should work on this okay. and different things. But he was one of those guys where I learned you know, I was self-taught and I learned how to uh, kind of compose, excuse me, <clears throat> how to basically com- compose a caricature, you know, like I would look at his proportions a lot, like, okay. you know, his head to, he would do a lot of like um, weird perspectives, almost like you're looking down. So okay. the guy's shoulders would be at the, like it'd be his head. And then it'd be the shoulders and then his body would get little, but it would be a perspective, almost like you're looking down on them. And he was really famous for doing that. And I started 
um, doing that in some of my early work and just trying, you know, trying to figure out his technique. Uh, but he's one of those guys where as a gift years later, he sent me a couple of his originals and he would, he would do his with acrylic and then he would do okay. really tight color pencil on top. And that was one of those things when I saw his originals in person, I was like, Whoa, like <laughs> it's way more simple than what I've been doing, you know, than you've been seeing. Okay. Yeah. And it's, so it's, it's just interesting uh, just because, you know, once you start getting into illustration and you start to, you know, when you start getting like that, you know, publication type work and deadlines, you learn real fast that they only give you a certain amount of time. And, um, yeah. And, but, but what everyone's going to see this final image and, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting because there's, there's a lot of mystery there sometimes about what it is. And, um, but it's, it's cool to talk about. It's cool to think about like where we came from and, you know, those, you know, cause I, I'm, I'm sure like me, you're influenced by tons of different kinds of art, um, yes. and artists. Um, I'm curious though, with, with, uh, cause I don't know, I don't know that much about Ghana. Um, I know, I mean, I know a brief history, um, I know that the country has been taken over by everybody and, and, um, and, uh, at one point or another, um, you know, it was, wasn't it run by India at one point and then it was the, it was the UK and then, you know, uh, it was back and forth for many years, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I actually just saw this, uh, do you know who Conan O'Brien is? Uh, yes. he's like a late night guy. I just, yes. Just the other day I saw he he had an episode where he went to Ghana and um and uh and I was like oh that's so yes. interesting because I'm talking with Bright soon, and uh there was some brief stuff in there but mostly it's just goofy comic stuff that happens in it, uh but it seems like <laughs> a really interesting country but I'm curious from your perspective yeah. and everything like when did it, when did it all start for you, uh your drive and passion for what you do. With your art, that is okay. So um. Yeah. Okay. So um, after after I entered into university, uh, you know there was a lot of art history. So you got to learn about how different kinds of artists use their work, and especially I was especially interested in how artists from Ghana and African from the African continent were making work that like related to conversations around things that happen on the continent mm -hmm. you know so um, somewhere in it was around 2012 everything sort of came together there were like you mentioned uh, with regards to the history and the politics mm -hmm. you know with the government and and such there was a policy that was made and i think um college tuition fees you know had to sh suddenly shoot up you mm. know and that was i think that was the defining moment where i felt like okay i want to make art that expresses my opinions about all these things that have been going on for so long and perhaps because of some privilege having been moved to get involved because politics here is very very uh, it's a very very touchy topic for many you know um, the one thing you can't openly speak about with another Ghanaian is um, politics and their views on politics and the like. But it was around that time that I felt like I wanted to make art that would express my opinions about um, the things that were going on. And then I had also seen how some artists of old had used caricature art, you know, as their voice to speak about, you know, some of these touchy topics, because if there's one thing caricatures can do, they can make people you know, look at very serious issues in a very mm. humorous way. And then that encourages other people to feel free about speaking about these things. So um, it was at that time that I started making some of my first pieces that were um, inspired by the politics. And, and my work sort of became like a critical voice about these things. But then there was also a lot of influence from other artists who were making music, you know, politically inspired music, um, politically inspired films. You know, there were so many examples that I could look up to. People who had done um, good or exemplary things and others who had done you know, like, things in the other way. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, okay, I can, I can create work that sort of um, 
adds to this legacy and I can pick examples from all these all these other artists and just build something uh, out of that. And mm. and then also I think the advantage for myself was that then I had the internet and I had social media. So it was easy to create work and engage directly with different audiences. I didn't I didn't have to wait to get published in a magazine or a newspaper. Um, also because maybe those opportunities didn't exist for me at the time. I could create my work that I owned myself and just put it out there and get people talking. And that was how it started for me. Hmm. That's interesting. And do you find like, um, I mean, I don't know if you've heard, but um, politics here in the United States is pretty shitty as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's actually very beautiful. <laughs> well, <I> mean, <laughs> because <yeah. laughs> it provides a lot of content yeah, yeah, for yeah. people there's like a, yourself and myself. There's but, a lot of, lot of things we can, uh, we can yeah, draw. <laughs> we can draw upon. Um, yeah. But I mean, but yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, it's, I know like I've, I've, my friend, um, I have a friend Nasrin from, uh, from Iran and, you know, she, she basically escaped from Iran to the United States um, a few years ago. And um, I, I was able to help her um, get in with a visa, you know, just, she needed people to help write uh little essays to to basically say hey she she's a very talented person and she should she should have this opportunity i can't remember it's called like the einstein something visa or some something like that um and i didn't know at the time how serious it was for her um i just wanted to help her come to the united states and be able to do some work and but then later i found out that um basically one of her friends that that's, that did caricature work was arrested for doing caricature work in Iran and is going to spend the next 20 years in prison. Yeah. Oh, gee. And so it puts a little bit of a perspective on like my privilege living here in the United States, you know? Um, uh, so that I'm just curious. I don't, again, I don't know exactly how things are where you are. Um, I know that your work um, is, is top quality, good work and everything, but, is it something that you have to look over your shoulder with a little bit with what, like, is it like real, like, you know, Hey, you're not supposed to draw stuff like that. Like, cause I mean, here, here in the United States, um, I mean, I piss people off. Like it happens. It doesn't matter if I, if I illustrate something that, that's pro Biden um, or anti Biden, or if I do, um, anything if i do a trump thing i'm gonna have like people like loving it and then i'm gonna have like threats like people hating it you know so but that's all i get is people pissed off and arguing and whatever <laughs> but i'm not worried about my safety i mean I, I, it's starting to get a little bit like that it's starting to feel a little yeah. bit nerve-wracking lately but um but you know what what is it like for you there with the caricature thing because i think caricature is one of those art forms that like you said, it it can be a tool that because it's 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 supposed to be more lighthearted and everything. It can be used to communicate and to to uh, to kind of um, you know tell a story where people can kind of lighten up a little bit. But it can also really yeah. anger people as well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I'm curious, like what what's that like for you over there? <laughs> wow. Um, so I'd say it's a little bit of everything you've talked about. Um, but generally, if you read about Ghana, maybe on the internet, or you got what the official government-sanctioned yeah. narratives were, you probably hear something like, you know, there is freedom for the press and freedom for artists to create, but that is just official stories, you know. Mm. And and this is this is like I'm saying it on the record, on the ground, everybody knows this is not what the situation is. So yeah. there is um, there is like strong sense of censorship for people who work in journalism and for artists who create work that speaks to what's the true or what their true experience of, mm. of the politics is. Um, personally, personally, I've had issues with censorship before um, where uh, a gallery was not comfortable to show some of my work mm. because it featured it featured the character of um, a top political uh, person who 
they felt or maybe they were affiliated with in some way. So they didn't want to offend the people. Mm. I've had instances like that. Um, and then there was this very infamous story where the Chinese embassy in Ghana saw some of my work online, which featured some of their top officials, and they were incensed about it. Mm. You know, they issued a, a press statement and, you know, with several warnings, you know, trying to get our side, like our government, to you know, silence the press and silence me because mm. of my cartoon. And like I've had some of these things, but for me, it's it's like a good and a bad thing. Mm. A good thing because you know the people you are trying to speak to are actually listening or they are hearing what you're saying through your work. Yeah. You know, it only becomes a bad thing when people, you know, take it uh, wrongly and try to cause you harm. Because a, one journalist was assassinated because of something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it can it can be very very bad, but then it can also be very good. So I guess mm. for me, it's it's been mm. about trying to be tactful about um, when and where I display my work. You know, if if I know a particular institution would not favor my kind of work, I would try not to work with them. You know, and and I like that's one of the reasons why I like staying independent. So then I don't have to mm. account to anyone, and I can speak freely and you know take all the responsibility. Or whatever comes up of it. Yeah, I mean, it's that's just it's just I just find it interesting because it's it's such a different, uh, I mean, different reality than what I you know, the what I'm used to. I mean, um, I it's it it's definitely things have changed in the last um, like I like when I first started getting into the illustration stuff, George Bush was president, and it was a free for all like it didn't, you know, it was just, it was, I mean, the guy was, was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, terrifying to some and, you know, rightfully so, but, but I mean, as far as the caricatures goes, it was so much fun drawing George Bush. And, and um, at that time I was, I was young and I was just getting into it and I didn't know, I was just excited to be able to do the work, you know? Um, and I really, it was funny cause I really didn't know much about the politics. I didn't really pay attention to politics in the U S really. Um, at the time, I just knew I was seeing all of my caricature artist heroes drawing George Bush in publications, and I, and I was like trying to get into the same things. And um, and then it was it was interesting because once I started getting the work, um, again, I wasn't paying attention to really what was going on in the world until I started actually getting the work and started, you know. I started listening to the news um, almost yeah. every day just because I started like realizing, Hey, I might have to illustrate this. I might have to draw this thing that's coming up. Okay. You know what I mean? So I started like paying. That's like, that's like re research. It's like research for you. <laughs> yeah. And I started, I started getting a, you know, a little bit more involved that way, but um, I always found myself in, as far as our politics, more neutral um, uh, because I personally like I'm not one of those people that um that like s thinks that the left or the right are correct. I have I find problems with <laughs> both sides. Um the same I, bit. <laughs> yeah, and I I feel like left wing or right wing is the same bit. Yeah, and uh, it's it's a lopsided bird that's just spiraling. Um I I but I feel like as an artist it, you know when it comes to the politics of with caricature for me, it's like, it's, it's fair game. Like if you're a politician, I don't care what, like if it's, I just wish that people would, you know, in the United States anyways, would uh, lighten up a little bit. <laughs> okay. Cause it's, um, and the whole reason I'm bringing this up is I just find it's interesting because it's, it's things are change have, have changed in the last few years. Like, um, like, you know, like I used to like, for example, when, when Obama was president, I, I did so many caricatures of Obama. Um, some were, were, you know, more pro, some were against or somewhere in the middle. And there, but there was just, it was kind of just all like a lighthearted, you know, people, it was fun. Like it was, oh. it was like, but then um, in the last four years, it's, things have been super intense. And um, I remember when Trump was elected, I was super excited about the caricature aspect of it, you know, cause I thought, Oh, <laughs> 
I'm going to be so busy drawing lots of Trump caricatures. Um, I just, and I thought this, cause he's a lot of fun to draw. And I just thought, Oh man, but it wasn't Yeah, it, It's like, nobody wanted to, I mean, it was, it was very, very small amount, uh, which I was shocked by, but it's just interesting. I guess my point is, it's just interesting because if, we're, if you're going to do caricature and, and, and political type work, um, it's just interesting being in, in that position where you're kind of, you know, I don't know. It's hard to explain. You're kind of like in a limbo a little bit where um, uh, I don't I, I guess that's just the way it feels for me anyways, where it's just like, um, I don't know, really, really know where it's going. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you, have you, have you also, have you also thought that perhaps your work or your take in the work that you create um, potentially would influence how your audience see the particular issue or the character. Uh, oh yeah, question. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it, it. But you know, again, it's it's really it's really funny because um, I, I, I uh, like for example, like I won't. T- there's been there's been jobs I've turned down because oh. I just don't agree with, you know what's you know what's happening but but for for example recently i did a cover of nancy pelosi and um she you know she basically was known for or she's she are you familiar with the whole thing that happened where she went to the hair salon like you know yeah a little bit so there's all this controversy because you know we're not supposed to you know california that they were really strict with the laws and you can't go to a hair salon or whatever and then there's nancy pelosi going to a hair salon so to me, it, the whole thing is just dumb um, and it's fair game and it's fun to just poke fun at her. So I did a cover yeah. of her. She's sitting in a chair and she's all like, you know, um, and it's supposed to be lighthearted. It's supposed to make people laugh. And it's and, and it's just calling her out on, on her bullshit. Um, yeah. But of course, you're going to get all these people that are just diehard lefties mm. that want to hate you because you did that like how dare you draw our nancy pelosi <laughs> and it's and and it's just funny because i'm i i'm I, like i said like i find myself like in the middle on, on on things for the most part and i don't idolize any politician i think i think there's yeah. a lot of corruption in government yeah and, and i think that caricature is a, a a tool to be able to express you know, like in how I'm feeling and how I think a lot of other people are feeling. And I don't idolize these people. And I don't think anybody should. And um, that's what's yeah. fun about the caricature aspect of it is that we can have a little bit of fun with it. And it's like, but people get so intense about these things. You know, they get so intense about the politics and, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting because, you know, I guess what I was trying to say, I, it was that, you know, when I got started in all this stuff, it was more of an innocent. Um, I just like to draw mm-hmm. caricatures, <laughs> you know. And then, and then I, I I didn't realize as I got older that it would start to get more complicated, you know. With when it comes yeah. when it comes to that kind of stuff, um, with celebrities, not so much. Like you know, whatever you know. No. But I don't do as many of those. It's mostly usually when I get hired to do caricature, it's usually pol- political type stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting, you know. Um, but again, that's why I'm, I'm curious about your perspective of it because, you know, it, it is so different, you know, your country is different, but I mean, I have no, I'm very ignorant to what your laws and government is like exactly. So that's why I was curious because caricature yeah. can be very touchy. <laughs> People can freak out and get upset. Yeah, it's, 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 it is, it is, uh, in my, in my own experience, I've had um, examples of some um, political figures actually admiring themselves in a caricature because like it or not, you have to be of some importance for an artist to even want to make a painting of you. You, know, yeah. you have to be of some relevance. So yep. it's, it's, that's like a, a first step. And then as to why you are relevant, then that is what they may not like because maybe you, you became famous for doing something bad. <laughs> they're going to draw you that way. Yeah. If you did something good, they're obviously going to draw you, you know, highlighting mm-hmm. some of your positive uh, qualities. But there was a, a very high-ranking political figure whose name I would not mention, but 
what she did at, at a time when she was the most important person in Ghana was that every single artist who ever drew a picture of her, you know, whether it was a picture that spoke well of her or spoke critically of her, she cut all the pieces from the newspapers and had each one of them framed and pasted them on her wall you know, in her office. So she, I think she understood. She knew that obviously she wouldn't be able to please everyone and people will have all manner of things to say. But she yeah. took it all in. And for me, that made, like, it made her appear very, very level-headed mm. because she's ready to accept the praise and accept the criticism at the same time. So for her birthday, her birthday present, some of her friends uh, came together and published a small book and then they commissioned me to make the cover for the book. And then someone took a picture of the office wall and sent it to me. So I was very, very uh, motivated by it. And I thought it was something I could show to my other colleagues because there are lots of people who would not try to do anything politically inspired yeah. because obviously it would mean you are literally shooting yourself in the, in the foot. <laughs> a lot of opportunities will not come to you because you know uh, the people who have the 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 power to give you those chances are all affiliated to one mm. political figure or, or the other. You know, but I thought it was, it was a positive thing. There was another instance where I, I saw the Instagram of the then president in my notifications, liking some of my work. So I, as soon as I saw it, I went to check if it was the, his real profile, and it was. So I took a screenshot of it, and I also showed it to other people, like, yo, this person you are scared to speak about is actually in my page liking my work. So I think he gets it. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. And then, but then there is the other, there is the other side, the other politician who you dare not to draw because even before he, I'm sure before he gets to see it, is they are they are troll, the diehard fans on Facebook will slaughter you. you know? yeah. So in Ghana, the, the two things you can't criticize is people's pol- view on politics and their views on religion. Mm. The politics and religion, you dare not talk about it unless you are ready to, you know, get all that heat that will come with it. It just gets yeah. nasty. It gets messy. It gets messy. It's the same thing here. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just what it but, is. But I, I, <laughs> I, think, I think those are the two things that influence uh, our lifestyle the most, the politics and the religion. Yeah, and so I think th- th- there is this fear of that, like uh, cognitive dissonance. You know, people don't want to be confronted with the fact that they've been fooled or they are being fooled, and so yeah, anyone who tries to tell them, you could actually become the en- the enemy. <laughs> so, but it's it's fun for me. It's fun to always once in a while just you know poke them and and get them in sense and then just disappear. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's hard because there's um. You know, the, one of the things that I find interesting is like there's been times where I've done uh, an illustration for a certain publication and I, I read the article and I felt like, okay, I, I get what, why they're talking about this and I have no problem doing an illustration of this. And then I, I'll get like a ton of like hate mail when it comes like, how could you how could you draw for this person and how could you do this and all this? Um, this is what's actually happening. And, and then I, I'll start like looking into the stories and what I find yeah. every single time is there's always a counter story to the other side of things. So even if one thing seems right, the, the other side's going to be angry and their side's going to sound very convincing. And then you look into yeah. the other side and then you find out, oh, no, the, the other per- people, they sound convincing as well. And, and it's like, you know, well, and it, it goes back and forth and it, and it just becomes a, like, a, like a blur. You know, it becomes a blur and uh, everyone has an agenda. Everyone's got an agenda. Yeah. And, um, but, um, you know, but it's, it's interesting because like in a way, because I'm, I'm, I'm also like really interested in comedy and stuff like that. And in a way, it, it, what we do with the caricature stuff is, is sort of like, like the court gesture in a way, <laughs> like, you know, I want to make you laugh. Just don't kill me, you know? Um, it's kind of it's like it's like come on man but um but i'm curious like what i want i'm curious about when you started getting into the caricature stuff like what was because you do a lot more than just caricature um but um what what specifically like drew you to caricature 
And uh, I'm also curious, um, there's a second part to that is just when you do a drawing, when you start a caricature, what's your thought process on that? Because I'm just curious, um, you know, when, when you're drawing someone, what your, what your first f- focus is, you know? Cause wow. um, so the first question was, what drew me to it? Yeah, like what, what got you interested into trying start- caricature? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so um, for one, it's something that has always existed in Ghana. You know, though different artists have used it differently. Um, one of the earliest artists I know about is um, someone who was called Ganata. And in the 1960s, when Ghana had just attained political independence from British colonial rule, mm. you know, our first prime minister and then first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you know, was uh, suddenly became like the, the symbol of, of that like liberation struggle on the continent and even in the diaspora. You know, he had a lot of connections with, with some of the civil rights movement leaders in the U.S. and, and mm. the such. Okay. And, and it's on record that at a point, the CIA wanted to take him out mm. in the 60s. You know, they wanted to take him out because then he started messing with the Soviet Union at the time and they didn't really know who he was affiliated with. Was he going with like the British, with the Americans, mm. with the Russians? Was he with the Chinese, you know? So one of the ways that they managed to assassinate his character was that they used this artist's work. So mm. the artist that I talked about, Ganata, he was constantly creating caricatures that spoke badly about um, the Ghanaian president. So by the time when other the other like machinery had come in to like get him out, people felt people did, I don't think people really felt um he was a good person that they needed to defend you know so for one uh i've seen how an artist work you know could literally be used in bringing down a government whether it was a corrupt government or not that's like a yeah. discussion for a different day but i saw how much power you know an artist could have creating work like that uh, several years later um you know there was there's other artist who goes by the name akusia Akosia is, is like a, a woman's name, but this, this artist is a man. And to sort of mask his identity, he created like a, a woman pseudonym. And he was, he's someone who is always published like in the dailies. And mm. very few people know who he actually is. But it was also to speak, you know, about the fact that it was a dangerous kind of art to me. Oh, okay. Could, lose your life, you will get arrested if you know, yeah. people knew who you actually were. So a lot of artists after him have all had to work using pseudonyms. You know, um, in recent hmm. times, Interesting. I may be the, I may be the, I don't, I don't want to say the only because that would be so inaccurate, but I don't know anybody else who was creating work like this, who, you know, was confident enough to show their face and work under their government name. Yeah. You know, um, that's a good I, thing. No, I right? didn't start show out some prog- progress. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, like I said, several people had used their work to lay several foundations for someone like me to, you know, come and jump on and try and mm. take it to like another stage. Yeah. So first of all, I was interested in the amount of power an artist who made work like that could have. Yeah. Because one, you people actually respect your opinions on these very, very heated topics. And so you became like a pundit and people wanted to listen to your side of the story. Even yeah. today, when something happens, I have people who write me online and say, hey, you're waiting for the picture. We want to see what you think about this. We want to see your take on this. Yeah. You know, that sense of responsibility is something that I found interesting. And so... Uh, when I felt like I needed to, you know, express my dissatisfaction with what was going on in, in Ghana in 2012, you know, caricatures were like a, a very, very good choice to make. I had 
other friends who were also making sketches. Like uh, my friend Rex, who was in school with me, was my college senior. He would always make, like every week, he would make a cartoon about a lecture or some of his friends who had a presentation to make. You know, and it was just something that we did for fun at the yeah. time. But, uh, and then I found your work and then I, just for like the visual, like the aesthetic, I thought, oh, I've never really encountered like a caricaturist who who took time to render realistically because then I could also still paint the way I enjoy painting yeah. and still make work that like symbolically meant a lot. So, so making work like this sort of ticked a lot of boxes for me. I could, mm. I could create work that I enjoy. I could create work that spoke to people and spoke to the conditions around the time. I could make work that was powerful and maybe even exciting because it's a little dangerous, you know. So all those things, you know, moved me to start experimenting with it. And then when I started sharing it, uh, people's reactions also encouraged me. But they're like, hey, you know, we need some of this. Uh, maybe you know, we don't always get the dailies. We are on social media. We need some of these things on social media. And, you know, a little bit of all these things sort of made me uh, commit more to it. So I spend more time experimenting. And even now, I still feel like I'm learning. There are so, several things that I don't think I do to the best of you know, how it can be done. So every, every work I create is a chance for me to, you know, work at improving myself at something. Yeah, and um, exactly. uh, when, I, when I start creating, when I start creating, aside the process which... I enjoy so much, and so I'm very, very slow <clears> at it. You know, trying to, you know, I'm just trying to create something I'm proud about showing to someone when I'm done. So I don't think about the time, and and I don't want to feel rushed. So I'll take my time and make my work. And um, uh, what am I thinking? Am I blank upstairs? Uh, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm thinking about how people will interpret some of the images that I make and the conversations that they will have after because that's also another aspect of my work that I enjoy. Seeing people talk about um, what I've created and what they think about it because I'm not always right. There are several times I've told people not to take my work as, uh, I'm, not, I'm not the news. So don't come to me yeah. expecting facts. You know, yeah. I'm just someone who's trying to make fun of something that I don't understand or or just asking questions about things that I'm experiencing. So mm-hmm. don't come to my work thinking it's like the 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 news, you know, who where you get to hear what happened in Ghana today. No, it's everything that I create is usually my spin on it. So I may be saying something totally off, but maybe because I'm I'm just trying to be sarcastic about something. You know? So yeah, there are a lot of things that I think about uh, when I'm creating. Um, it's interesting. Um. <laughs> I, I feel very similar to a lot of what you said. Like there, I relate to a lot of that. Um, and it's funny because I find that uh, you, sometimes you, it's easy to get lost in it too, because when you, uh, you know, for me, when I start drawing somebody, um, I, I feel like what I'm trying to capture is the, the feeling, the, you know, the overall essence or the character, you know, you, the, you want it to feel like that person, right? It's like basically capturing the, the, the impression of them and you lose, like, you're not thinking as, as far as where I'm coming from, I'm not thinking, Oh, let's, let's see how ridiculous I can make this um, to insult, <laughs> to insult the person or like, I don't, I don't uh... really think of it that way. Um, but what's interesting about caricature is, um, you know, it, caricature is, is basically the, the exaggeration of truth, like pushing the yeah. truth. And when you do that, it becomes funny. You know, it, it, it's, you're going to start to, to, uh, to notice things like, it, like I've had people, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I'm sure you have, but like, where you draw someone like maybe for a private commission or something. Um, and the, per, the, the person that hired you is like, oh my gosh, you got, that one little thing just right. No one ever notices that. I can't believe you, you know, but that's what we're, what's what we do. We, we look at every little teeny thing and we balance it when we compare it to this, 
this feature and, and we, we go back and forth and and it's it's really for me it's really an obsession of of trying to just you know put that puzzle together like when i look at a person it, it's like a broken yeah. puzzle and i'm trying to take those pieces and, and put it together how i kind of see that right um but like what's interesting is the reaction can be sometimes not at all what you were expecting where people you know, <laughs> you know what i mean where it's like no i didn't mean that like <laughs> that's that's not what i was trying to do i was trying to to just draw this person <laughs> you know what i mean and so that it's just i find it interesting because um i i do find i, I you know i do find the art of caricature to be m more of an important art form um and i think it's it's really cool when people um are able to use it in that way but at the same time you know they're still having fun with it you know um yeah. and there's a lot of people that don't get it you know there's a lot of people that um that like one of my favorite things is is when you get someone who is like a you know oh, i love your work so much oh man they go on and on about this piece and that piece and then they want you to draw that they hire you and then you draw them and then they're just freaked out by what you drew <laughs> it's like <laughs> i did the same thing I to you that i did to everybody I think I think maybe maybe people are just sensitive about um, the way they are represented or their self image. Oh yeah, it's you the know? same so way with. If everything. I know someone is like that, I'll try and stay away from you know doing those kind of commissions. But you know the difference <laughs> is when you do like a piece about a politician, you're not making it for them. So no, even yeah, if exactly, they thought right. mad they wouldn't be able to come to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Whereas if it was like a private individual, then you, it's like, you have to be accountable to them, please them in a way. Yeah. I like to imagine politicians um, when they, when they get like a cover or something that I did, I, I always like, <laughs> fan, I always have like this fantasy in my mind where they, they pick up the cut and they're like, God damn it. You know? <laughs> but, this you guy. know like, yeah. This guy again, you know, um, I, and it's, it's, I love it, man. And I, and I love, that's what I love about you. I can see it in your work. That's why I was really wanting to talk to you about this stuff, just because I just find it interesting. Um, you know, for one, it's interesting talking with someone from someplace that I've never been to. I've always wanted to go to Africa. Yeah. I've never been there one day, hopefully I'll be able to go. Um, yeah. So it's, it's really, it's really interesting. And also the thing that, that I find interesting is I'm, I'm not very familiar with very many um, caricature artists or illustrators from Africa. It seems like you know what I mean? So that's a that's yeah, a cool thing. I mean, you're there's. I mean, how is it? Is it a common art form there? I mean, as far as what you're doing, or or people look at you and be like, "What is what is this weird art you're doing? Are you?" you know? <laughs> <laughs> it just seems. It just seems like um, you've got the whole like you know you got the whole. Is there anybody there to, com to compete with you? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I I wouldn't see it as compete per se, but. Um, I'm just joking. Around yeah, there are, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are, there are, <laughs> there are artists from other parts of the continent who whose work I see and I respect like a lot. Yeah, you know, as far as caricatures are, are concerned. So uh, there is one very uh, popular South African artist by the name uh, Zapiro. His, his name is Zapiro. Zapiro. But his star, yeah, Zapiro. Z A P I R O. His okay. style is more um, linear, black ink, you know, like the classic caricature style for the okay. press and all that. And um, what I like to do is sometimes appropriate from other people's work. So he did a character of, he did like a caricature of like the character of a former South African president whose name is Jacob Zuma. And because of some very, very bizarre story, he always captures this guy with like a shower, a shower rose on his head. So let me let me just tell you quickly. So this president was accused of having uh, sexual relations with a woman who was certified HIV positive. You know, it was very it was a very bizarre story. And then the president said, "Well, once he was done, he took a shower, so he's sick." And and I'm like, well, that's like a very, very dumb thing to do, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, so since then, Zafiro always painted the president with a shower rose 
over his head. And oh um, yeah, I'm in Ghana, but I'm also interested in what happens in South Africa sometimes. So one time I painted uh, the South African president, and I think it's one of the pieces that you put <laughs> up on your page when you announced this uh, conversation. So I basically um, you know, painted him in what was more of my like, more rendered 3d style and still had like the shower rolls over his head yeah and then like <laughs> yeah that that piece so yeah zapiro is one of the artists on the i'm company. looking at his like, work now older, um, much much older guy okay yeah very nice it's very nice yeah, there, yeah, there is this other one whose name is gado he signs his work gado but he's like i said a lot of these guys use pseudonyms though yeah. now they are famous and everyone knows who they are you know um, when you come to ghana um, yeah, there are, like I mentioned, Akosia, I mentioned Ganata. Um, yeah, there are a lot of other cartoonists, you know, but it's not, it's not, I don't think it's something that is very lucrative. So not many people will. Yeah, that's another thing I was going to ask you because, about too, is, is yeah, how, yeah. What, what's that aspect like? I mean, I mean, I don't know, you know, a lot of people don't want to get mm-hmm. into their personal uh, finance uh, situations, but I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind talking. <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah. That, what it, What is it? I mean, what is it like commission wise for you with with work? Okay, so um, I don't think we don't have that strong culture of magazine publications here, mm-hmm. and even for the ones that exist, they would just do photographs on the yeah. cover mm-hmm. on all the articles. They just do photographs. I hardly would you ever find someone doing illustrations for magazine. So I didn't I didn't enter into this kind of work thinking I was going to get any commissions from any Ghanaian magazine. And I was still fine with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, lately, lately since uh, putting like political cartoons on social media blew up and it became a thing, there are some some of the the bigger uh, news agencies or tv stations who commission artists to make work that is sort of like exclusive for their use so they when they like you know in between putting content online the tv stations will like publish some of these cartoons on their facebook or twitter or instagram and that is also like the other aspect of it but personally i haven't tried to work with any of these stations or should i say the only one who approached me and we had like a meeting to discuss what the terms would be. Mm. I think the next week also the director uh, resigned because they wanted to enter into politics, so they resigned. And so that, that deal fell through. But I mean, uh, my work that I make, I, I consider it to be like a, a gift I'm giving to everybody. You know, everyone is free to use it. Uh, some aspects of it, of course, you know, so yeah, the, those like, culture of commissioning for magazines don't exist or newspapers don't really exist or I don't know. I've not considered it. It's it's I don't see it happening, but I still Well I tell you what I tell you what you need to do. Um because here's here's the awesome thing about the fact that you we you live now <laughs> where we have the internet and everything. Because like for, for example I live in Chicago. Uh there is no like I don't get any work in Chicago. Like I have hard, I've, I think I've done like maybe one, maybe two commissions in the last 20 years in this city. Um, and they pay terrible. So it was like, it was just really whatever. Most of my work is in New York and we, I've done a lot of work in Europe. And, um, but what I think you, what, what would really help you is because it doesn't really matter where you live. If, as long as you're able to do the work, um, yeah. you know, you, put together a very strong portfolio and, and then, you know, that's, that's a, that's the number one thing is to make sure that you've got like a, you've got great work. So put together a strong portfolio, um, consistent so that everyone knows exactly what they're getting when they look at your style, because, um, you don't want to confuse art directors. You you basically want to, you know, they, they look at your site and they're like, okay, we know exactly what we're going to get if we hire this guy. Um, so that's the first part. Second part is, um, if you start entering certain shows, um, if you can, like um, in in the U.S., um, there's different there's different shows that you can enter, um, like Communication Arts Society of Illustrators, um, even like the one it's called American Illustration. They accept 
submissions from all over the world. So there's a lot, there's a lot of things like that. And the reason that would be important for you is if you get pieces into those, um, you're going to get the attention of art directors and they're not going to care where you're from. There's as like, long as-, as long as that we want that work, we want that quality of work. Um, and so that, that would, that would be a good thing to try. Um, I don't know if you've already started trying to do that kind of stuff, but, um, because that's, that's the cool thing about what you do is, you know, you've got, you've got this, um, awesome talent. So, you know, and you you live in 2021. Um, and, uh, you, you actually, you're set, you're six hours ahead of, of us, right? Yeah. So you actually live, yeah, in the, you live in the future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, I think, I think that, uh, you know, that could be pretty cool, you know, um, to be able to, you know, and, and it's, a, to, to be honest, like, you know, it's, it's challenging f- for me, even like in the United States, it's challenging. Um, you know, it's not, it's like, there's like slow times where it's just like that. I don't, I'm like, I don't know when the next job's coming and it's, it's really nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, then you have your jobs that just, you know, it doesn't pay anything. And it's really stressful, but you know, you're doing it. And then you, then, and then every once in a while, a good one comes along. And, uh, but it, it's, it's never, it's never like consistent. That's the lifestyle of an illustrator. You know, yeah. it's, it's always, you know, but, um, but like I said, like the, it, the cool thing is, is that, um, because, uh, we do live when we do, and we have, you know, as long as you've got internet connection and everything else, um, yeah. cool things can happen that way. I mean, you, you definitely have, and believe me, I won't even, um, uh, I've, you know, wasted time of trying to talk about it. If I didn't think that you had it already, you already got, you got it. Like you're, you're a super talented Thanks. artist. So, Thanks. um, Thanks. you know, like I, I want the best for you, man. I think that your work's awesome. Um, but it isn't easy. <laughs> like the, you know, it, it's, it, like, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's, it is a stressful thing. Um, but you know, it's, it's also an amazing thing just to be an artist, you know, like the fact that we get to do it, you know? Um, yeah, yeah I think it's pretty awesome, man. Um, and, and that's another reason why I like to do this. I, I, I love to be able to talk with other artists because even though I've never met you um, in person, it was a like brief, uh, I think we might've chatted briefly during the Lightbox thing. I don't remember exactly, but, but um, yeah. you know, like, yeah. like uh, I just feel like an, other artists no matter where they are they're their family you know it's like like we relate we get each other we it's like um we all, we all get it <laughs> i think anyways so it's it's really it's really cool to hear um it's really cool to hear your um your perspective of things just because again like i'm completely ignorant to um what's exactly going on in in ghana um it is funny it is funny like what i told i told you how like just the other day i was watching that conan o'brien thing and um it was really interesting because he was uh uh walking through the streets they have the little vendors in the shops and um he was dancing and doing all these weird things and yeah um and it was just really interesting but like halfway through i didn't i wasn't paying attention exactly because i was playing with my kid and stuff and then i realized oh my gosh this is where bright's from this is so weird because I'm talking to him in a couple of days, you know, so then I, I, re- I like, I like, re- I like re- rewound. Yeah, I, I went to I the know. beginning and I'm like, I got to see this again just to see a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Um, but it seems beautiful. Like yeah, you're really, I, 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 I know. I, I was going to say, gonna say I know the streets he was, he was walking on. Oh, like, oh, okay. I go to, so. Oh, okay. So you, uh, yeah. you, you're very close to the, to the coast, right? Is that the ocean? It's like, yeah, right. I'm yeah. Right. Cause yeah. like, I'm um, I'm closer than most. Oh, okay. The capital just, is is on like the south coast. So yeah, it looked beautiful, man. Oh, like this just from the I, I, I. This this is like totally off topic, but I gotta ask because I'm I'm sort of obsessed with sharks. Is it is it is there like some uh, crazy shark action okay. going on there? <laughs> What's the shark situation? No, not that I know of. <laughs> no, no, really. <laughs> I, I just uh, I just no, saw the, I, I saw some of the shots when in that and I'm like wow there's there's got to be some some good sharks in there because I know in South Africa uh, um, there's a you know you got a lot of the great whites down there um, yeah but I was just curious 
So what's what's the what is the beach life like there in that area? Is it is it like a surf area or is it like what's it what's the the vibe of the? I'm just curious, um, culture wise. Well, surfing, su- surfing culture is not very big here, but I know of a few uh, people who like like who come from elsewhere and like they set up like a mm. like a boot camp or like a uh-huh. small center to train people who have seen the surf and like are interested in giving it a try. Yeah. You know, on certain parts of the coast, and that's like more towards the quiet side in the capital beach life in the capital is more like uh just people going to you know sit at the beach you know have a drink or there are all these nice resorts on the Mm. beach where you can go and just chill you know but it's not especially with like the last year and this year you know the government is not encouraging anyone to oh yeah yeah go and get into that so it's, it's a bit slow now, but I mean, personally, I like to go to the beach, you know, if I had a date, I'd go to the yeah. beach somewhere where it's quiet on a weekday and, you know, yeah. just watch that, out. watch that sunset. Yeah. Yeah. Get some Get, good put, fish, put some nice music yeah. on nice and romantic. <laughs> no, it, it's beautiful there though. That's it, it's, it's really beautiful from what I saw. It's awesome. I would love to, I'd love to go there. Um, speaking of uh, with, with everything that's been going on uh, in this last uh, crappy year, what what's that been like for you there? I mean, has it been, uh, has it been pretty much shut down for you as well? Um, yeah, it's, uh, well, I'm someone who spends much, like most of my time sitting behind my work. Yeah, same. <laughs> so when there were restrictions on moving around, I don't think I really felt, you know, I'm like, oh, everybody else gets to live like me now. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Uh, the only sad thing was that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the only sad thing was that I couldn't go out to get like some good exercise because I play football mm. or soccer, as you may call it, on the weekends. So yeah. around the time, a lot of my teammates didn't think it was wise to still play. You know, that was the only thing that I really felt bad about. But work-wise, you know, everything is still cool. And the and the better thing about the whole situation was that I actually got the time to pay attention to social media because I'd reached a point where I started losing interest in posting work, you know, with mm. all the algorithms and all the new rules about social media use and all that. But mm. uh, in the last few months, I actually took time. I was like, okay, you know what? Let me find some new artists to look at because I need to like refresh my feed and all that. Yeah. And guess what? That was how I met Bobby Chu. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So, like, I've been thinking, like, oh, maybe, you know, out of the the turmoil and the bad situation, something beautiful actually got out of it. Because I met Bobby Chu. Well, he, he, I, I posted some of my work on his page when he wanted to do portfolio reviews. Mm-hmm. In, I think, was this September or August? Uh, but... Then I got to meet Bobby Chu, and then I got connected to you, and I'm speaking with you right now. So <laughs> that's yeah, awesome, man. It's been it's been that's a cool. very it's been a very bad year, but I mean I can look at these just I can look at just these two experiences and say, hey, I'll, yeah, I'll settle for like a good year still. You know, yeah. I'm just you got a good outlook on things, man. Because I I mean I I try to I've tried to do the same as if I can. You know, it's been it's been a crazy. Uh, year <laughs> it's been crazy but but i mean you know there is a lot of good things you know like m- my wife and i had a baby in june yeah. and um and it was like a very crazy time to have a, a, a baby um it was crazy in the hospital and you know there's lots of restrictions and all these different things and then of course you just have the added stress of if you're having a, a new baby in the middle of all this insanity but the way that I looked at it was we have this beautiful oh. baby, you know? So like, let's, you know, so yeah, we're trapped in our house, but we're trapped in our house with our family and, you know, to, and like you said, like to me, I'm pretty much just locked in my studio all the time anyway. So it's not, <laughs> I, I, for me, this is pretty normal. Um, yeah. um, do you guys have uh, the, do you, do you have the, the mask regulations there as well? You get everyone's wearing masks all the time and all that. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. Th those those rules have been spelled out, but uh, as to whether people are actually following, yeah, uh, it's a different conversation. But yeah. personally, I think <laughs> I think I think it boils down to a big issue of mistrust between the political elite and the rest of the people. It's the same. So it's you have so this funny. small group of people. Yeah. You have this small group of people who have yeah. lied to you their whole existence, and then suddenly they want to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't even feel like conspiracy there are some people theory. who think all they are saying. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So yeah, I I think I think the blame partly also falls on the government because they've always lied to the people. So why yep. should people believe you that you're suddenly telling the truth? Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny. It, it's it's the same thing everywhere. I I have the I, it. it I mean, there, there's so many people that believe so many different things all over the place. It's crazy. But like, um, I always, I find it a little bit funny when I hear Americans um, going on and on about like, there's a, you wouldn't believe how many Americans I've heard say, they, they, they talk about this whole experience as if it's only an American issue. Like, like it's a, it's a conspiracy theory and we have to wear a mask because of this and all these things. I'm like, it's happening everywhere, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Everybody is dealing with this. Um, yeah. And it's, I just, it's, it's, it's funny, man. Cause I have talked with um, just doing this podcast. I've talked with people from all over the world. Um, uh, mm. And it's just interesting, you know, I think it's good for, for people to hear it because, you know, like we, we have to, we've, I think since um, I think it's been since March. Yeah. Uh, here, yeah. everything was shut down, and um, we had to wear the masks. And you know, in Chicago, has been really strict about it. Like you, you know, so everyone's wearing masks and uh, everywhere, and it's fine. Like, like it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's like, but like the funny thing is, my family they live um, like six or so hours north of me. And they didn't, the people in, in Wisconsin didn't really, it was like, ah, you know, whatever. And then I remember it, it got started getting kind of bad up there. And then my dad was talking to me. He's like, he's like, yeah, we, we got to wear masks now. And, and, um, you know, he's trying to explain to me, it was just funny because we were, we, in August, we went up to visit my brother and, uh, to get away for a little bit and, uh, go fishing and stuff like that they have a lot of wildlife up there and it's just nice to go out on a lake and whatever but but they were like just let you know when you come up here you you've, you've got to wear masks yeah, when you go places they're like telling me, i'm like yeah it's been like that for us for like eight months you know it's, <laughs> so it is it's just interesting it's the same, yeah. the perspective it's the same, has yeah. changed it's everywhere people are you know it's interesting it's a it's a weird time but you know what the the cool thing is is for us i think is like we you know we are living through it you know it, and uh, we're we're gonna experience you know who knows what could happen or is gonna happen but the thing is is we're we're continuing to to be creative right we're continuing to, to do the work and yeah um and i've noticed and the, the thing that's encouraging to me is that there's been so much amazing things happening with artists and and the arts because of this like people are like reaching out with you know uh, forming like really awesome uh, networks and groups and yes. um, a lot of people doing really cool things for one another. And, you know, people are just being creative in this situation. And I find that really encouraging, you know, um, just, you know, it could be, it could be a lot worse, you know? And so I, I, yeah. I just, I try to look at the, the, the glass is half full, you know, <laughs> it's half full, <laughs> you know, it's not half empty. <laughs> yeah. It's, but uh, it's interesting, you know, but um, anyways, enough with that garbage. Um, yeah. Um, there's. I wanted to show you before we uh, before we call this uh, uh, a quit. It's it. By the way, what time is it there for you? It's like ten o'clock at night or something like that. Um, if I can quickly check, yeah, it's nineteen past ten. Ah, okay. It's almost your night night time. Um, but but this is actually <laughs> my wake up time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not ten now, so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so we're just getting started, folks. Um, but uh, I've got a there's there's a few uh, fan art uh, drawings and paintings of you, so I want to show you those before we before we go. Okay. Um, so let me switch this over to. Uh, let's hold on one second. 
Okay, so we had some tech technical difficulties. Uh, let's uh, let's try that again. So let me uh, switch the screen here. See if you see this. Um, I'm gonna switch over. Let me see if this works. Please work. So did it switch over? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you can see it. You can see the artwork. Yeah, I can. Okay, uh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways. So, yeah, I'm. <laughs> Uh, this is by not, um, Jack Lemonier, by the way. Okay. The art, the artist is Jacques Lemonier. I'm not, I'm not used to seeing myself um, <laughs> as the subject of a drawing. I'm, I'm used to being on the other side. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's uh, special for me. But yeah, no, that's that's what's I fun to, to make it because it looks like he crossed the hatch. Yeah, all the way. Yeah, he he's very, got a really nice uh, cross hatching technique. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it, 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 it is it is funny when when you're used to being the one to draw everybody, and then <laughs> when you see yourself, you're like, wait a minute, that's not what <laughs> I don't look like that. That's why uh, I love doing this. My, my locks. Yeah, but I, I love it. I love it because I because I knew people were going to draw. I sort of like selected my best pictures. <laughs> <laughs> your hair, your, your hair is awesome, by the way. That's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. Um, let's see here. Let's go. here. We go. This, <laughs> this is by uh, Dominic Zeilinger. That's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> Little wink there. I, wink, wink. I, I, I appreciate the stuff that, especially the stuff that I can't do. You know, oh, it, yeah. it would take me super, super long if I had to work in this style. But I know a lot of other um, caricaturists who who draw like this. Very, very casual. It's almost as if they were writing. It was very fluid and oh yeah, straight lines, super confident lines. Yeah, yeah he, you know, one I thing that. I like about his work, he he smits a lot of stuff. He always has a, a like a nice design element to it. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were you ever, were you ever a big fan of Al Hirschfeld? Did you ever check out his stuff? Um, no, I don't know him, but I, I will look him up. Yeah, I should look him up. He, oh. he, um, he passed away, I think, around 2003 or so, and he was like, I think he was 99 or 100 years old. Uh, but he, he's very, um, he's known for like, like line work, but there's like this awesome flow to it, and, um, and it might make you angry because his likenesses are so good, but they're so simple. Like, it's like, man, he did that with only a few lines. So yeah, he's, he's awesome. Look him up. You think you'll, you'll dig it. Yeah. Um, this is uh, by oh. Jonathan Groot. And okay. uh, I think this might be color pencil, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you look, uh, you look a little sauced in this one. Had a little, a little too much to drink, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, but this this also actually looks like somebody else that I know. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, if I took the beard off, ah, <laughs> if I took the beard off in his drawing, I'm sure I would, it would pass us. That's funny. But yeah, it's 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 quite um, the extra challenge when you almost don't find any like easy features on a character's face to play with. And it's like everything is sitting safely, you know, somewhere. So it, mm. it provides an extra challenge because then you're like, hmm, which feature can I can I pull? Which one can I make bigger or smaller or throw away? I don't know. I think you got a lot of information there to play with. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of these days one of these days we'll have to do a swap. We'll have to do a oh it'll be fun. All right. All it'll right, because be yeah, I, I definitely. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do that one of these days. We'll uh, we'll we'll do a we'll we'll one of these days we'll do a swap and then we'll we'll do another talk and then we'll show them and it'll be gonna be kind okay. of yeah, it'll be fun. Okay, okay. Uh, so <laughs> this, this is uh by Walid Shahab. I like there's 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 some attitude in this one. There's some like yeah. Like I know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> you play play with the lips and the teeth. Yeah. 
I like that, but I like the the little, you know, the 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 the, the way he did the the nose, the nostril on the one side, and the one eye is kind of like slightly closed a little bit more, yeah. little bit of, <laughs> like kind of look like you're like yeah you you think so okay all right i'll show you what's up yeah a <laughs> little bit of attitude there again it's kind of interesting design too just even like with the, the red yeah. triangle there um for the color it's kind of interesting um this is funny this is uh uh graziano de carlo de carlo this person really, it really went in <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really went in yeah <laughs> yeah and 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 the photo he used is currently my most favorite photo ever oh. so i really appreciate him going for that <laughs> he had time to work out all the flesh textures yeah so real some nice details there the skin yeah yeah <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> oh. that's cool and uh, this is the last one. This is uh, uh, by Juan Gastelum. Um, yeah, he. I think he wrote something to me like I didn't. I didn't know too much about him, so I just have him hanging out. Yeah, in, 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 in his office or in so, the studio. Or, yeah, <laughs> I can see an easel on the right side of the photo. Yeah. Well, at least this one. There's he usually draws people holding aliens or, um, you know. It's weird stuff like that i'm always like what's happening like like uh, my last guest uh this she has long uh nice long beautiful dark hair and he did a drawing of her with a shaved head and a mohawk i don't know oh. um but but that's why but this, we love, this, that's why we love him this 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 actually looks like how i'm looking right now if you saw all of me in my <laughs> small civil chair you know only that i'm painting at the tablet and not like a traditional yeah. easel <laughs> but this is definitely me. and then also i'm often topless but it's, it's very hot here so. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, but I, I love this too i love that's, it i love that <laughs> often topless you heard it here folks <laughs> 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 that's awesome um yeah thanks everybody for for submitting those that but yeah I, I think I, yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think um, just like you were saying, making work like this got you, you know, uh, interested in like paying closer attention to the news and such. Oh, yeah. it, it helps you, it helps you just um, n knowing more about the character you're about to caricature or paint helps you to even develop their, you know, caricature character even better. Mm. Because certain things that you may know about the person will give you ideas on. You know, features yeah. you could include or features you could play with and the like. So yeah. I understand it was tougher because yeah, I'm not like there yet. But well, <laughs> it's uh, you know, like um, I think yeah, for sure, man. Um, like I, I've always kind of you know, like as long as I can remember when I would uh, like even man, like years ago, I did a um. Man, I I think this was probably two thousand four or five, maybe. Um, I got it was kind of it was a really cool gig. Uh, I got hired by um one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's friends, um, a real estate buddy of his, to do uh, two paintings for him for a birthday gift for Arnold, and it was like crazy. He's like, yeah, he's, Arnold's got everything, and I want to uh I want to give him something original. So he hired me to to do two paintings of him. And so I remember in my studio at the time and I was so excited because I was like, Arnold's going to get to see these. I, I wonder if he still has them. I have no idea. Um, one of them was um, a collage of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like seen like there was a, uh, it was like him. Uh, let's, let's see him from Conan the Barbarian um, and Terminator kindergarten cop um gosh some some other movie but basically it was a collage of like different arnold's like you know one painting of that and then there was another one of him as the governor of california and he's sitting at a desk and i thought it would be funny like to just have a, an empty desk he's like in a suit and everything but an, an empty desk but instead of um there being like a phone or papers or anything all there's just a little stack of raw steak 
just a bunch of meat. Okay. So like I just figured he just every once in a while just be like, oh, and just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just put a big giant piece of meat in his mouth, you know. Um, but anyways, while I while I was working on that, I I, I put on Arnold movies and I just listened to Arnold movies the entire time, like while I painted, just like had that sound like oh, ugh, the whole time, you know, while I'm working on it. <laughs> and I just started doing that like from from then on, basically. So like whenever when I would get a job. When I was doing George Bush, I would listen. I'd, I'd, I'd try to, well, I don't even know. Yeah, there might have been YouTube then. I, I'm i pretty sure there was when I was doing that. But I, anytime, like, I don't do it like all the time now. Now I listen to a lot of podcasts, different things while I work. But mm-hmm. every once in a while, like when I did, um, I did Lil Wayne for um, Rolling Stone magazine a few years back. And I wasn't that familiar with him um i knew what he what he looked like and stuff but i bought a couple of his cds and i just non-stop the entire time was just like listening to lil wayne the whole time while i was drawing him just um i mean i was just literally sitting in my studio just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and just like painting and stuff the whole time and uh i i think that's it's you know even if like those that was a portrait it wasn't even a caricature but i think yeah. the cool thing about that is you you kind of you, you, even the sounds they make it, it it helps there's something you're like putting you feel like you're putting a little bit of that in there you know what i mean um and that's that's yeah, a cool thing about us yeah. living now with with the internet we can like look up almost anybody and see how they move how they talk Every, yes. their posture yeah um yeah man it's it that that thing i mean like i always think like if norman rockwell like lived today and would you know had the kind of cameras we have now even on our phones he would just, be like, whoa, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a pretty awesome. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's, yeah. That's another artist whose work I greatly like, admire. Oh yeah. Rockwell. It's, yeah. He he's obsessed with, yeah. With the oil and his, yes, his, the gestures in his characters, the facial expressions and even yeah. the costumes. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I have a bunch of his stuff that I often look at and I, you should uh you should read his book if you if you get a chance um it's i think it's called my life mm-hmm. as an illustrator but it's pretty interesting because he talks about like um his just a lot of what it, what how he you know did everything like how he would i mean he would have people come to his studio um and he had costumes and different things and he would dress them and he would pose mm-hmm. them and light them and uh, I started doing that like a long time ago. Like, you know, mostly I take photos of myself to get reference for things. Um, yeah. Do you, do you do that? Do you have a lot of uh, crazy photos? <laughs> I, 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 I do that too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> when, yeah. when I was supposed to send these photos, I thought I could send one of them. But I said, nah, somebody yeah. might slaughter me in their drawings. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of black I do that photos. too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, right now I'm doing um, a piece uh, that has like, wow, I don't know if it's, I think it's six people um, and it's a political piece. It's, it's not caricature. It's kind of in between caricature and portrait, but it's, um, it's a Trump and a bunch of his people. And it's, it's kind of like they want me to do sort of a renaissance type thing. And um, so, okay. but um, basically I posed as every single person, you know, that's in the image. I, it, so I've got myself doing all these different poses and so basically it's just me <laughs> all over the place with just different uh, people's heads, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's the way, that's the way we do it, man. It's part of the fun. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the process. <laughs> it makes yes. it fun. Yes. Um, yes. But yeah, I don't, I don't really listen to uh, like, I've done I've done enough Trumps now where I don't have to listen to him uh, or watch videos anymore. Really, um. <laughs> and I know I know you have that impression. You know you make very good Trump oh. impressions. So yeah, I've been following. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. It's been terrific. It's been terrific talking to you, Bright. Okay. I apologize right now. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. Bright bright Antwerp. You you're in Africa right now, okay? Very good country, very good place, Africa. Some people call it a continent. I call it a country. Okay. 
(laughs) (laughs) It's wait a minute. It's a. it's by the equator. The equator. You say equate, equator, equator. Melania, is it the equator? I think it's the equator. Yeah. I'm. I'm going to blind the video and tell everyone Trump, you know, signed out on my punk podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. It's. It's been a crazy, crazy time. That's the. That, that's the one thing though. Um, that it's. It's funny. I've done, um, I've done, you know, before Trump even became president, I did a lot of Trump drawings. Um, mm. I, well, maybe, actually, you know what's what's funny? One of my first published covers ever was of Trump. Um, mm. Oh, God, I think it was two thousand four, um, and it's it's him sitting on a throne with a pentagram behind him with a goat head on it, and he's and Trump's got horns coming out of his head. And he's got hooves for feet and he's going like, like you're tired. And then like, there's like <laughs> little cupids on the ground. They're all like, Oh, you know, afraid. Um, and he actually has that cover framed in a gold frame in his uh, clubhouse because oh. the art director for the New York observer. Um, I didn't know this when I was working for the New York observer, but Jared Kushner, Trump's son, son-in-law owned the, the New York observer. So, that that's just that's just really strange. I had no idea the entire time I worked there. Um, but anyways, the art director was invited to the clubhouse and he took a picture of it and sent it to me. And he's like, "Is this your?" I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" First of all, <laughs> it's an old piece that's just terrible. It's like I, I I didn't really know what I was doing and it was like mixed media. It was like acrylic and watercolor and color pencil and marker and pen and ink. Like it was everything on cardboard. Um, okay. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was just trying to like figure out my style. And so it's not like a great piece, but it's funny that that's hanging. He's got it framed like um, mm. him as the devil. Okay. <laughs> Listen, this beautiful. Look at this is how I'm the devil. Okay. Look how beautiful I am. Is it hot in here or is it just me? Yeah. It's really strange. Um, but like throughout the years I did, you know, you know, other Trumps before he became president. And then um, it, you know, it's, it's weird. It's, it's a very surreal thing because I've never, ever gotten used to the fact that he's the president. Um, it's always, yeah. seemed, it's, it's always seemed comical and like weird. It just, that has never felt I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's just, it's just, a, it's a strange, very surreal thing um, because he's always seemed like a character to me. And um, the funny thing is what I was going to say is um, e- even just on, I've, I've kind of been, um, there, there's a few people. I don't know if, 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 if you're like this with caricature stuff, but there's certain people that are just so much fun to draw like George, um, George uh, Lucas from star Wars. I love drawing George Lucas. Um, okay. I've drawn him yeah. so many times, but same thing with Donald Trump. Like I've, I've done doodles of him and, and then sharing them. People are like, how can you stand drawing him? Like, like, <laughs> like but it's like, it's fun. The, I mean, it's like, there's so many opportunities of things you can do with that face. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, yeah. it's sort of like, a you know, it's a caricature orgasm, you know, it's like, what are you going to. Like this is insanity, <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> I, I, mean... <laughs> I um, just as a side note, I had a I was featured in a show once, and I had a piece that featured Trump in there. And yeah. A lot of people came to the show, and I was super excited. And when I'm at the exhibition, <laughs> I will talk with everybody. I don't I don't mind who you are or what your background is. I will talk for hours on end. And so this um, American lady. I didn't know she was American at the time, but she just approached me and she commended me for my work. And she thought I was very bold to be making the kind of work I was making, considering like I'm a very young person. And then I went on for hours, you know, talking politics, talking politics. And she just kept quiet and, and listened, listened for all everything I had to say. And then when she was done, she asked another lady she was with to give me her card. And I looked yeah. at it and she's like, 
a top top ranking official at the uh, American Embassy in Ghana, and I just spent like thirty minutes just <laughs> oh firing shots at Trump. But That's funny. <laughs> but she was super super cool, and yeah. she became a very good friend from that show, and she invited me to hang out and like. Because of where it was my first time of going to the embassy, she showed me around and she's been to every other show I've ever done since then. But oh, I think awesome. she also gets it. You know, she understands what it means to me. Yeah, so I've had <laughs> I think he's he's a very interesting character and if for nothing at all, he's like brought a lot of opportunity for artists like Oh yeah. Us. <laughs> Some people are just fun to draw, man. Some people are just, you know. Yeah. There's, there's a few out there um that like I'm trying to think of of somebody else that i don't know i mean they're, they're like george lucas is one of those people that i have drawn so many yeah. times mostly because i've been a huge fan of star wars since i was a kid and then okay and then um george lucas has such a, a crazy face like to me like it, he almost looks like a star wars character um his hair is amazing like his neck is amazing yeah. um and to me like even with obama um i uh I noticed something when I started when when Obama became president and I started to get a lot of um Obama commissions um there there's a there were certain artists out there that I won't name but I noticed that they kind of figured out a formula of how to draw okay. and Obama and then they would just draw him the same way like over and over and over so every time I see some see them draw him it'd be the exact same thing um okay. and i noticed that with george bush as well like certain artists would they would get george bush and then they would they kept getting hired to draw george bush but it would be the same and it was good but i was same. like I, I had this the thing that i and the same thing with anybody from there on that i have to draw or paint more than once i always do it different every single time and i it's just i just can't i yeah. can't you know like with obama i started feeling comfortable enough with with him that i could be a little bit more creative and push things but but then um, I, I basically was like, what can I do different this time? What can I kind of, how can I push myself or how can I try to do something? Um, it's not always easy. Some of them don't work out. It's, it's, it's never easy. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried that myself, but it's not easy because yeah. um, even with my president, I, there was once that I made a painting of him and I just felt like this was the best image I could make. And then the next time I tried to draw him, I wasn't pleased with, with that. Yeah. Because I felt like, oh, last time I did it better, you know. And I was like, what more can I do to, like, improve on that? Because I also didn't want to, you know, draw the same face. You know? Yeah. So it wasn't easy. I tried. So sometimes I just have to put the old one away and make sure I don't look at it for a long time. Yeah. I, I don't know which features I, I, I played with and all that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, think, I think it's one of the good things you've done that I've, I've been trying to also get to that but it's definitely not an easy thing to pull well i especially think especially when you are satisfied with something yeah you've done prior. i think it's important uh, though to to do that because to yeah. put your to you know because uh, the, the last thing i think that any anyone wants to be is stagnant you know and to no. be stuck and kind of i mean there's artists i know that are amazing but they haven't changed in 30 years their work is exactly the same yeah. um and it's still great um, work and I respect it, but it's like I I I don't have like a way of drawing people or that I stick with. It's it's always different. I always start differently, um, and I don't know if I really do it on purpose. I just recognize that I do it, and I think I do it because I it, it can become boring to do the. I don't know. Like I I want to try something yeah. different. I want to like you know I've done things before where I just randomly will do like put down a crazy color that has nothing to do with my image and just see what I can pull out of it, you know? And it, it, sometimes that can be a little silly to gamble with when you're working on a job. Um, but sometimes clients, if you're lucky, they're like, Hey, just do something cool. And, you know, yeah. you know, so I, I wouldn't do that or recommend doing that on like some, you know, something that something with a deadline yeah yeah i mean i have before um but not not very much i mean it's it's, it's it really depends on the client you know yeah. um but uh 
hey man this this has been super awesome to uh to get to know you a bit and chat with you and um yeah man it's uh I, like i said uh, early on i really like what you do man and um yeah. i'm i'm hoping that that uh if you haven't seen his work everyone needs to go and jump on and follow um what what's your instagram again it's just your name right right okay yeah it's just my name okay so it's the um, same on twitter same on instagram same okay. on facebook um and unlike um uh the current president of the united states he's still on twitter so you can find bright um <laughs> on twitter <laughs> um uh but yeah that so um i just dated i just dated this now because now when people hear see this like years from now they're gonna be like oh that was way back then uh, when that guy got kicked off of twitter um <laughs> but um but yeah do you have before we uh get going here do you have anything coming up or anything you want to promote or just let people know that's going on or where they can find you all the other places or um wow so um right now i i i like to say i share my work freely on the internet and social media but mm -hmm. every now and then when i can i'd like to have like a curated show somewhere mm -hmm. you know and i have a few of those coming up but um, they are not really so formed that i can actually speak about right now so if anyone follows online i i always put information out so if anyone is around if any of your other uh, members of your audience live around my city i mean yeah uh, always welcome to come and check it out and and then you can play soccer on the or football on the weekends right yeah <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> but you gotta wear the mask yeah. um yeah. so yeah, yeah. thanks thanks Have again man um hey stay safe man and um like i said one of these days Thank you. um when uh we have some more time or when i have some more time um coming up soon well, I'll have to draw you. Draw me. We'll, it'll be kind of fun. We'll have to. We'll. we'll yeah. We'll, we'll do yeah. Another sure. Show. I'm. I'm. <laughs> It'll be awesome. Okay. Okay. I'm. I'm going to start working on it now because <laughs> I would like to take a lot of time. Oh, I already have a picture in my head for you. So. Oh. Okay. I now have a reason to actually paint it. So oh, paint sweet. It. All right, man. Well, thanks again. And uh, hey, everybody, thank you so much for for listening in and uh, supporting uh, this podcast. And um, we'll see you all next time. truth.